I wanted to introduce everyone to Michael Gresti, who's the VP of Workplace Analytics from FM Systems. Michael has over 25 years of experience advising Fortune 500 companies on various aspects of corporate real estate and sustainability. He has consulted to senior executives on the development and management of more efficient buildings and on the integration of sustainability into company strategy, operations, and culture. Michael, welcome. Uh, I think what you guys are doing at FM Systems is, is really, really interesting, and I'm excited for this presentation. So please take it away. Thank you very much, Paul, and thanks too to Realcom for uh, having us uh, participate in this. <clears throat> what I wanted to look at is uh, how our corporate tenant customers are looking at uh, leveraging our advanced analytics solutions. And we've identified six typical use cases uh, of problems that they're solving. Um, uh, so tying, so on the top left, the desk sharing efficiencies, ensuring that they can efficiently understand uh, where to allocate the desks, uh, sharing bases, notable space utilization. Uh, that was a big trend prior to the pandemic to increase space efficiency. Of course, those parameters have changed, and we'll talk a bit about that uh, towards the end of this part of the presentation. Uh, understanding employee mobility and right down to department level insights into that, uh, how, how different departments use space differently in the commercial um, office environment. Uh, conference room and huddle space optimization. Uh, these are very precious resources in the corporate environment. Uh, I think that's going to change uh, even more so now with the COVID uh, situation and uh, conference room capacities are being reduced to ensure safe distancing. So understanding and optimizing very valuable conference, conference room space will become an even higher priority for corporates as they go back to the workplace. Uh, a big challenge, a big headache in corporate uh, office-based management is restacking, moving, and, and therefore also capital planning. So enabling that through smart analytics. Um, location analytics without requiring IT involvement, deploying technologies that don't uh, engage a uh, long and often arduous engagement with uh, IT, and understanding real-time availability through those kinds of data solutions. And then finally, uh, very new for us and for the, uh, the industry as a whole, uh, understanding congestion and uh, dealing with contact tracing in the case of contamination. So we're going to look at this number of uh, customer success stories uh, with a, a large a multinational technology company, a, a very familiar name to everybody. I think I might use it, but uh, they've been monitoring over 13 million square feet, over 100 sites worldwide in their global portfolio. And over the last few years, they've dramatically reduced their capital spend as well as their OPEX in managing these spaces by significantly reducing the amount of space they need. <clears throat> Uh, and that's accelerated this year. They, they just announced the closure of about 80 sites uh, due to anticipated lower capacity demand uh, following the pandemic. But uh, advanced analytics have really helped them understand utilization and optimize space uh, without uh, resorting to a lot of manual studies and the like. Um, another large uh, technology manufacturer, also a very familiar name, uh, <clears throat> was able to consolidate uh, large world headquarters or five sites into two, five buildings into two, uh, leveraging analytics to um, grow employee agility from zero one-to-one -one seating to 100% agility with various sharing ratios based on the actual demand in different departments and in different buildings and achieved a net uh, TCO reduction of about $20 million over five years. Um, a large sorry, a large global energy company, also very familiar name to everybody, moved into a new global headquarters and found that utilization just wasn't what they expected it to be. So leveraging existing infrastructure, the analytics solution showed them uh, our conference rooms were being uh, overbooked and underused, and they were in generally oversized, and they were able to remodel conference rooms to increase the number of conference rooms available and reduce uh, the uh, gap between the supply and demand. Um, increased productivity, um, made more space available, increased employee satisfaction. And then uh, lastly, I work with a large multinational biotech firm that's ongoing, uh, deploying our safe spaces solution to uh, enable this company both to measure and manage uh, acceptable thresholds for occupancy and the safe distancing guidelines, and also to identify uh, the people that come in contact with a sick person uh, if that's discovered, if there's been a contamination event, to do the necessary contact tracing 
and follow up to reduce the potential spread of the virus. Um, this is a solution that uh, we put together using uh, existing data sets and uh, technology deployed, but just applying new algorithms and new technology to that. Um, just a note that we've been, I think, at the forefront of providing uh, resources for facility managers. I invite uh, anyone who wants to, to take a look at our coronavirus resource pages, including a playbook um, and guidance, as well as look at the technology that can be deployed to use AI and other resources to help with this. Thanks, Paul. Michael, thank you so much for that uh, presentation. I can't imagine the number of questions that you guys are getting in this COVID era. Um, and it's you know, you know really amazing what you guys are doing in terms of pivoting the system to allow for uh, contact tracing and, and uh, social distancing and those types of things. And I didn't even think about the moving aspect of it. If people are moving to new offices and everything that has to go into that now, um, you know, uh, uh, with cleaning and, and distancing and how you lay out the offices now. So a question for you, um, is there a, a, a question or what's the biggest question that customers have been asking since COVID began? And, and you know, how have you guys had to pivot or adapt to answer those questions, if at all? Well, I think one of the biggest questions is what, what do we do? And people are flummoxed by this. And so, you know, we began very early to plan our own workspace and we really used our own offices as a laboratory for understanding how employee customers might move back into the workspace. Um, we also participated in a number of industry events and activities with IFMA and Cornet to better understand the thought process and share ideas. And we were found that in fact, almost all our platforms and systems enable customers to, to make the kinds of decisions they need. So to redesign, re reorganize their workspaces, to include safe distancing guidelines for employees, whether they be in workstations or meeting spaces or common areas. And then also to, once they've deployed that and, and, and planned that, measure and track the effectiveness of that. And in, in fact, in fact, meet any compliance guidelines, whether they be internal to the company or as imposed by various authorities so that they can assure, reassure employees. Um, what it really came down to was uh, making smart decisions and plans and then communicating to employees that their health and safety was being uh, made a priority. Uh, we've seen a huge interest in indoor air quality and overall environmental quality, uh, of course, uh, related to COVID-19. And we're deploying a new environmental sensor solution and environmental indoor air quality qualification system in the next few weeks that leverages uh, sensors and technology to help customers keep their workspaces clean, but also reassure employees that these workspaces are safe to enter. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, you know, it's, it's part science, but part art, I guess, here, where you have the analytics and that, but the employee well-being has to be taken into account and sentiment kind of of the employees of if they feel safe now. Which, which must be really interesting. Uh, quick follow-up question. Um, are you, uh, you mentioned kind of compliance. Are you taking in outside data based on state laws and, and opening guidelines and things like that to have it very state by state or country by country? So our, our platform is highly adaptable to uh, specific customers needs and the, the jurisdictions that they're set up in. So they can configure uh, the platform to with, with rules to comply with whatever guidelines they're following. So it's up to them to implement that. We're, we have professional services teams who can help them do some of that. They can do some of it themselves, but they're doing exactly that. They're using the platform to uh, follow guidelines and <clears throat> measure and track uh, what's happening in the workspaces as they begin to plan uh, the return to work and in fact, uh, implement that. 